Hello, I just climbed Kilimanjaro and I learned a few things, so I'm going to tell you them today. Now I hate when you click on one of these videos and they don't just tell you what you've clicked on the video for straight away, so that's exactly what I'm going to do, no messing around, just tell you everything that I wish I knew before I climbed Kilimanjaro and some things that I did know uh, that hopefully you know already going into it. And if you did like this and you are going to climb Kilimanjaro, then I have got a full video, like a 20 minute video of the full experience uh, and you can go and check that out after if you want a more in-depth version of what to expect. So lesson number one, if you've not booked it yet, then low season is empty. You're the only person on the mountain. I did the six day Machami route and uh, there was no one else at our camps the entire time, felt like millionaires. So yeah, I went in April 2023. Um, and I think April and May are low season. Once you're above the clouds, there's no chance of rain anyway. So worth considering doing it that time of year because in July it's rammed apparently. Uh, just depends what you want. If you want more of an atmosphere or you want more alone time. Uh, before I go any further, I should tell you, I did the six day Machame route. There's a few different options you can take going up the mountain, obviously. Uh, Machame is one of the most scenic, if not the most scenic, and it's the most aggressive acclimatization profile. So you start, Arusha town is like 1,300 meters elevation. Then you start the hike at 1,800. Then by the end of the first day, you're at 2,800. By the end of the second day, you're at 3,800. And then on your third day, you go up to 4,6, 4,600, and then back down again. Um, so you're literally averaging over a thousand meters of ascent every single day uh, and that's very aggressive for acclimatization and what that meant was I found my limit so if you want to see the full story it's in the full video but essentially uh, I started to feel altitude sickness I had no issues in my head but I had some strong nausea I've never really had nausea before and it manifested in a lot of stomach issues so I couldn't eat for over 40 hours on the mountain didn't really want to drink uh, and didn't enjoy myself that much so I would recommend I signed up for the six days initially and then changed to the seven days uh, when I got a bit nervous before. So yeah, I would recommend potentially if you've not been to this altitude before, don't push it any harder than seven days and just watch your body the whole way up. Even if you think you're gonna be fine with the altitude, something's gonna creep in there at some point. Lesson three, which actually surprised me, is that all days except for the summit day are super easy. So if you've done any mountaineering before, do not expect to be pushed too hard on the first five days. It's a walk in the park. Uh, it's only that final day where you're up at around midnight and you've got a nausea fueled hike to get to the summit on z almost zero oxygen. Um, so yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be so comfortable, but it, you kind of need that in order to preserve your energy uh, for that final day and obviously to acclimatize appropriately. Lesson number four is I thought I was a hard nut and that I wouldn't use Diamox, which I wouldn't change the way I went about things. To be fair, in hindsight, I wanted to see, because I've been to 4,100 meters before, I wanted to see if I could get to 5'9 without any altitude issues. So I didn't take Diamox, I wanted to listen to my body. On day three of the Machami route, you go up to 4,600 and then you drop back down to sleep at around 4,000. And when we dropped back down is when I lost my appetite and I couldn't eat, yada, yada, yada. So, uh, consider taking strongly consider taking Diamox unless you really want to see what your body naturally does. Um, what the, in a nutshell, what it does is it helps you breathe deeper and longer so that you can draw in more air and acclimatize more effectively and quickly. Recommended doses are anything from one tablet per day to a quarter tablet per day. I opted for the minimal once I started the altitude sickness of a quarter tablet per day. Um, I'm not a doctor, I'm not gonna recommend you anything, but uh, look into it. Lesson number five, warm clothes. It is minus 15 on that summit morning as you get towards the top. Uh, which is freezing, even for an Englishman. I'm only used to like minus five in the winter. Uh, I was fine surprised at how cold it was. I thought I was gonna be stripping layers off when the guides were telling me, no, you need four layers on your pants and then four layers on your top. I was like, no way, I'm always sweating. Um, I'm always like, you see me topless on my channel all the time. Like I get hot super easily, but it's cold. So I did need for three or four layers on my trousers, three pairs of socks on, three, four layers on my top, and I was hiking like a almost maximum output and you know, per, a perfect temperature. So two pairs of gloves um, and my head was too cold as well. So you need to invest in, and I'm serious, like even in you know zero degrees, I'll never have anything on my head and feel fine. Uh, you need to invest in something warm for your head. Uh, that's gonna help you a lot on that summit morning. On the topic of clothes, just in case this ha happens to help one person that sees it, I bought gaiters which you attach from your shoes to your calves to stop any like water or whatever trickling in. It didn't rain, uh, you don't have to trudge for any snow so gaiters were unnecessary. I had waterproof socks anyway, um, so maybe consider not bringing them 
because uh, despite advice, like there's no need, you just need your socks and your shoes, mate. Right, the final point of what I didn't expect is for the water, because you put the water purification tablets in and they do taste bitter. And once you've had altitude sickness, the last thing you want to be doing is drinking that stuff, especially when it's got some bits in it from the river and stuff. So when you're trying to get four or five liters a day in, and I don't really like hot drinks too much, I like a hot drink in the morning and then I'm sick of hot water. So uh, it may sound like I'm just whinging, but anything you can do to make it easier to get that water in for yourself, the better. So if you've got like electrolyte sport tab uh, tablets that flavor the water or like a highly concentrated cordial, um, that would be worth bringing, uh, trust me on that. All right, bonus round. Three things that I did know and I was right to know because it did happen exactly how I expected. Number one is you're walking super slowly. At the summit, you have less than 50% of the oxygen level that you have at sea level. So at sea level, you have 20% oxygen. Uh, and then at the summit of 5,900 meters, you have around 10%. And what that means is, you're walking less than half the speed that you normally would be walking and it feels ridiculous you're like at maximum output and you're just like trudging along like this i'll put a video over the top so yeah expect that it's necessary you've got plenty of time like i said acclimatization is your enemy not um you know setting a world record another thing i did know because i've camped before but some people might not and it helps me it might not help you is bring a pillow uh, I just had a little travel pillow. It just helps so much with sleep quality when you're in a tent on a flat ground. The mattresses we used were great, uh, but a pillow always goes a long way. So I had like a inflatable one. So it takes up zero space um, and gives you a much better quality of sleep. So think about that. And the final point, which I did know, uh, and it manifested exactly how I expected, is you do need to dig in on that final day. So be prepared to dig in. Uh, you're gonna go to a dark place potentially. We started our hike at 1 a.m. and I got to Summit at 7.30. And even though I hadn't eaten for a few days, I, was, and I'm not my, I wasn't my best self, I was still giving it everything. Uh, and that's what, six and a half hours of constant walking. We probably had about 15 minutes rest in total in all of that. Dig in, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be worth it. You know this by now or you wouldn't be trying to climb Kilimanjaro. And a final bonus, if you haven't booked yet, go with my company. So I've done all of my excursions pretty much out here in Tanzania with Mafi Adventures. I will put their website and their WhatsApp number in the description. Fantastic service and perfect combination of value for money and getting the proper experience. So we pulled no punches as you'll see in my full video if you go on to watch that. It was exactly what you'd expect, um, but you're not paying a middleman uh, to get the prices. Like if you Google Kilimanjaro Trek and stuff, you can be paying up to like two, two and a half, uh, three grand um, in dollars. You're looking at well under $2,000. Um, so yeah, go and give them a shout if you need a safari or a Kilimanjaro hike. All right, sweet. I don't normally do instructional videos like this on my channel. Sometimes I do. I just do whatever I feel like because it's my channel. And so normally I'm just taking you on adventures around the world. So if you're new and you watch this one and it's useful to you, then please subscribe and like the video and follow along for what's up next because I'm sure if you like this one, there's gonna be stuff that you're interested in seeing because TV's rubbish these days. So uh, don't you wanna see someone doing something real, you know, like me, climbing mountains, skydiving, scuba diving, all that good stuff. All right, thank you for watching. What? If they enjoyed the video, what should they yep, do? Yep, I'm gonna enjoy the video. And then they... so a lot of people they will be subscribed and then there will be a lot of people to become in these places okay yeah and thank you so much like and comment yeah like and comment and hidupkan lonceng yeah hidupkan lonceng <laughs> yeah, in my language all right good <laughs> thank you <laughs>